All right, hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to YouTube Sunday service. Uh, so glad you're here. Let's start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for uh, your word and your truth. Um, God, I pray that we would not um, live on bread alone, but from every word that comes from your mouth. Uh, Lord, that we would be able to be sustained and to overcome instead of uh, always getting beat down and defeated, God, you've called us to um, to be con more than conquerors in you um, because of you, Father. And so I pray, God, that we would actually be able to live this out by faith as a testimony of your power and your grace, God. We thank you so much, and we pray this in your name. Amen. All right, guys. Um, welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. And... Uh, we're going to start with worship as usual. We're going to sing even when it hurts. So, uh, yeah, I pray that you would be able to join me as we have our time of worship. <clears throat>
praise the Lord. Uh, once again, just so glad you're here. As if, as you've seen there, I've um, entitled the message "Through the Storm." Uh, I know it's a very generic title, but I'm really excited about the word today. Um, and so, yeah, uh, if you have your Bible, let's turn to Matthew 14. We're going to continue where we left off last week. And we're just going to be reading from verse 22 to 33. All right. So Matthew 14, 22 to 33. I'll go ahead and read for us if you want to follow along. Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside to pray to, uh, by, uh, by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. And all God's people said, Amen. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. All right. So we're just going to kind of go line by line uh, today with the word and just uh, um, just to give you a little heads up. So uh, the verse uh, that I want to focus on first would be 22 and 23. I'll read it again. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. So the first thing we notice is Jesus uh, decides to pray uh, at night after he finishes ministering to the, the crowds um, who, you know, as we talked about last week, interrupted him uh, when he was perhaps needing some alone time to mourn and also to recharge. And, you know, if it was me, I remember um, back when we were on missions at Costa Rica, um, you know, by the end of the day, uh, you just want to sleep, especially, you know, when you're getting into the second, third, fourth days. Um, all you can think about is just getting on that little sleeping mat and getting some shut eye. Um, but Jesus teaches us here something. His higher priority than his physical rest was spiritual rest. Um, and for me, definitely one thing that I could work on is praying um, and just being more sensitive to the Spirit through prayer and that growth. I know for sure, like, um, sometimes I'll be, like, typing away on a sermon and it's just, it's not coming out, you know, I'm not able to focus and I realize that I didn't pray. And those times where I'm earnestly praying for you guys um, at Joyful Church, when I start um, my sermon prep, uh, by praying for you guys individually, name by name, um, it, it definitely makes a difference in the sermon, uh, to, in my humble opinion, just like, you know, more from my heart uh, through the Spirit of God. So um, prayer is definitely one of those things that um, you just have to do it, and, and that's how you know the power of prayer. Um, the second thing I want to talk about is just the word about crowds. Um, I noticed that with the when I was your guys' age, I don't think I really cared about politics. Um, I knew who the president was, and I knew what we learned at school, but I wasn't um, really that active. And the, the considerably different thing nowadays is I see even like junior high kids, um, and when I talk to my uh, friends who are my age, maybe you know post college, you know the older guys, and even they notice like like kids are active about politics and from a young age and we don't know uh really you know if it's because they are super well read or if it's because their favorite instagram or tiktok person is um you know super political but it's it's a trend it's it's very 
in right now to be into politics and so I just wanted to say something about it don't worry I'm not gonna try to tell you uh, to be on the left or the right not at all my desire I could care less <laughs> what side you're on um, but a quick word about the crowds um, you know it's easy to lump them into one word the crowd um, but the reality is that the crowds were made up of vastly different people some were there um, because they were sick and they wanted healing maybe they didn't care about who Jesus was they just needed to get healing um, you know and they were desperate for it um, and some were there probably because you can get free food others might have been there because they heard that Jesus did these crazy miracles and um, they just wanted to get some entertainment see what's going on you know check this dude out um, others are probably drawn by the the great sermon you know some people church church hop and like oh you know I like the praise here and I like the oh this pastor's so good at speaking you know and you know they probably they heard that he's a really good teacher and so they just wanted to go and get some wisdom and and yes of course there were the real ones who really believed that he was a messiah and followed him um, even if it hurt them you know and they were really truly uh, genuine um, so there there's just a lot of uh, people in the crowds um, and I believe that the same goes for Christians, you know, just because you're Christian, uh, just because you go to church doesn't make you Christian. Uh, just because you identify as a conservative, um, you're not necessarily a Christian. Just because you're a liberal doesn't mean uh, they, that person's an atheist. Uh, you know, just because you voted for Trump doesn't mean you're a racist or that you're ignorant. Um, you know, and just because you uh, are a Democrat doesn't mean you believe in everything that Biden is, you know, standing for. And so the point that I want to make is that we should be careful in lumping people uh, into categories because even within those categories, there's a lot of different types. And um, to lump them into one and just either to, um, you know, on one hand, to just accept them all is dangerous. And of course, to brush people off just because of their political orientation could be you know, I'd be sad because you could be missing out on some great friendship. So keep that in mind. Um, you know, there's a lot of bias. There's a lot of division out there. And I um, just want to say that, you know, it's possible to uh, embrace people and be respectful and still stand for what you believe in and have a good conversation. <clears throat> and, you know, Jesus, knowing these things, he ministered to them all. He fed each and every single one of them and in compassion uh, on every single one of them, even though he was tired and in need of some rest. And um, we can do the same. The next verse is verse 24. The boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. Um, yeah, you know, I wondered as I read and reread this passage, why on earth did Jesus, knowing, by the way, this was the Sea of Galilee, um, knowing that the Sea of Galilee is famous for having storms, like just instant storms, like because of its geographical location being kind of, it's the second lowest body of water on the face of this planet. So it's kind of in between two valleys. And, and when that's the case, um, the wind can rise up and bring up a storm like nothing like instantaneously so it's a very very uh crazy body of water very dangerous and um he jesus knowing that sends his disciples on a boat to go to the other side in the middle of the night when it's more dangerous and i'm just like why would he do that i understand jesus wanted personal time but he could have told them to stay you know on land they could have gone together but jesus has them go on ahead and it just reminded me that sometimes God will lead us into situations um, that we may encounter where we end up encountering our fears or situations that are kind of dangerous um, or that might lead to our suffering or something unpleasant. Um, and that is the truth. You know, I think right now the sense that I get from current American Christianity is that is the opposite of that is that if you're a Christian you're gonna live in this little bubble of peace and that you'll prosper um, uh, you'll be happy you'll enjoy success and just whatever you do God is just you know with you and and you're gonna be happy and and I follow a lot of Christian artists and Christian leaders on 
Instagram and um, they're just always happy. They live in these like big, beautiful houses, you know, perfectly manicured lawn and um, they, you know, they're good looking. They have, they're, they're just, their life is just picture perfect. And um, of course the nature of social media is you never share when you, you know, are sinning or having a rough season or you're, or you're suffering. Um, you only share what's great and you make yourself look good and desirable because people want to listen to your music when you're a successful, happy Christian, not, not when you're going through something tough. Um, and aside from that, you know, that's, that's American Christianity. Um, if you look elsewhere in the world, Christians are actually suffering. They're dying. They're being persecuted, thrown in jail. Um, they have, they're facing disease, hunger, poverty, um, danger left and right and and the reason why they're able to con you know continue despite these things is because uh, of their hope in God uh, they cling to the promises of God and and they're willing to strive on and fight the good fight of faith because of what is written in here and so when I look at Christianity in America it's it's just not what I think is biblical Christianity um, I'm sorry to say I'm not trying to hate on anyone um, and I'm not saying every American Christian or someone who's on Instagram is just bad. I'm just saying that the picture of Christianity that they are illustrating through the medium of social media, um, uh, sorry, is, is so, uh, I, I feel like not real Christianity. Um, it's not the whole picture by and large. Um, and so if you feel that God just keeps leading you into a difficult season in life, Things just don't always go as good as you expect it to be. Um, you know, I just want to encourage you to, to hang on and just continue studying the word and, and pray. And, um, you know, it, that, that God has not left you. I want to share a verse with you, Philippians 4, 10 through 13. It says this, I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry whether living in plenty or in want, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. And so that last verse, Philippians 4.13, I think is one of the most out of context verses in American Christianity that I've ever seen. And, you know, usually it's used like, you know, in some crazy Christian pseudo uh, italic font or cursive. And, you know, usually it's talking about success or you can do whatever you want because Jesus is like this magic genie who uh, will help us do whatever you put your minds to. Like, you can get to Columbia, um, you, you can go to Harvard, or you can buy that new Tesla. Um, just God gives you strength, you know. Um, I can do all things. You can be that multimillionaire. Um, but if you think about the context, Paul is writing to the church in, in Philippi, and they're famous for going through so much suffering and so much hardships. And Paul himself knew uh, what it was like to be broke, to be impoverished, to be beaten, uh, to be have his, you know, <clears throat> to have people want to kill him. And yet he's like, I, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, meaning I can go through all these sufferings, whether high or low and I know I can endure through it. And that is the true spirit of what he's saying. And so I wanted to just remind you that what you're going through a bad thing, those are the situations through which God is saying, hey, I'm gonna give you strength and you can truly do all those things. And this is a not a small matter because, <clears throat> because of the fact that this health and wealth prosperity gospel is what is so widely known and so, um, uh, spread out and that's what you know social media doesn't work if it's boring and if it's not successful and it's not glitzy and glamorous it, it, it it's this false version of the gospel that is so proliferated and and the reason why that's dangerous is because that type of um, circulating false gospel alienates those who believe in God or who may be young in in their walk with God and they're like okay like I believe in God too but how come my life isn't like these you know famous Christians who are just doing well amazingly all the time like I'm not making a ton of money I'm not 
living in a gigantic house. Um, I'm not, you know, doing all these famous and happy things. And how come their Christianity and mine look so different? And um, how come the gospel isn't having that kind of wonderful health, wealth, prosperity effect on me? Um, and, and that's the danger of it. So I, I want you to know that because your life doesn't look like those of what they put on social media, that you're doing something wrong. In fact, think of it this way. To the crowds that Jesus fed, all Jesus was, for most of them, was a food factory who healed people miraculously, who gave great and wise sermons and could answer any question without batting an eye. But to the disciples, Jesus sent them on a dark and stormy sea to paddle against storm winds all night in a grueling suffer fest, being sleep deprived, and then suddenly appeared to them in what could only be a ghost walking on water, it says right before dawn, meaning it was still super dark outside, and they scared the living daylight out of them. And so, and, and it says they paddled, they left just before nighttime, and Jesus arrived, and they're still in the water just before dawn. So they're just paddling, they're, they're tired too. They can't, they didn't sleep a wink, and they're just paddling all night in the dark, beating against this wind, and Jesus appears to them walking on water. And yet, who do you think knew Jesus better? Um, <clears throat> so that is my encouragement to you. If you're going through a hard time, it's not because Jesus has abandoned you. It's because Jesus is working something in you to strengthen you um, and to grow your faith. Verse 27 says, But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. So if, again, if God is going, letting you go through a hard time, or a hard uh, adolescence, um, encountering heartache, loss, of friends, family, loneliness, whatever your cup may be, you know, God is saying, take courage because it is I. I am the one who is at work in you, in your life. And he uses these difficult situations to teach you something, to grow your faith. Um, so the true gospel doesn't consist of smoky, you know, stages with a bright, fancy light show, fancy clothes and corny lyrics and perfect sounding sermons um, that make us laugh. God isn't just about giving us earthly comfort, although he does. Um, God is about growing our faith so that we can conquer and overcome. <clears throat> Verse 28 says, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus, uh, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. Uh, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why do you doubt? The point I want to make there is when you're going through what you're going through, never take your eyes off of Jesus. If you do, he'll grab you and he will not let you fall. He will not let you sink. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, the, you know, just understand that when, especially when you're strong, the enemy wants you to take your eyes off of Jesus and to look at the wind, to look at the wind, um, and, and the waves and, and to, to, to make your faith fail you, um, or to kill your faith. Um, but remember to look upon Jesus. That is why it's so important to spend time in prayer, in the Word, so that um, you know what's true and, and, uh, and you know how to differentiate that versus the lies of the enemy. Almost done. Thanks for hanging in there, guys. Verse 32, And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. And that is the point that the outcome is worth it because of what they went through, because of what they witnessed with their own eyes, um, they were able to understand something, that Jesus was indeed the Son of God. So whatever it is that you're going through, if it gets you on your knees to pray, if it makes you desperately cry out for something more, for something real, um, to cling to God, to know that His mercy and His grace and His love is all you need and all you ever want, uh, blessed are you, because of the per because the person who is just skating through life and nothing ever happens and they never reach out and call to God, they're missing out on eternity. They're missing out on Jesus Christ. And so blessed are you uh, when you go through these times because 
calling out to God and getting to know Him and growing your faith is the greatest gift that you could receive. So I just want to encourage you with that word. Um, we may never walk on water, um, but we surely will encounter storms in this life. Um, and I pray that your faith would be strengthened, that indeed you can do all things. Uh, you can go through all kinds of ups and downs. You can go through the hardships and even potentially persecution one day, and yet God will give you the strength to go through those times. Um, let's go ahead and co close in prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, um, God, we, we know that you know our hearts and everything that we go through. Um, Father, I pray, God, that the enemy would not be able to implant into our minds and hearts, God, that, that you are forsaking us or abandoning, abandoning us. God, you are always with us and you're working through every situation, um, God, to teach us something, to guide us and to walk with us. Father, I pray for any, any brother or sister out there whose faith may have been wavering, uh, whose heart has been weighed down by uh, the things of this life, uh, any young son or daughter out there who has been suffering, um, whether physically or mentally or emotionally, uh, God, I pray that you would heal them. Father, I pray that you would strengthen and encourage them right now, God, that you are with them right there um, and that they would continue to trust you and that uh, you would continue to grow their faith and, and, and to continue to speak into their heart, take courage for it is I. Um, Father, I pray that uh, we would continue to follow you with all of our hearts, we thank you, Father. We pray all these things in your, in your name. Amen. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Um, and I hope you have a, a, uh, a week of overcoming, of conquering, of being encouraged no matter what it is you're walking through. Um, praise God for that. And have a great rest of your week. Bye-bye. I'll catch you in the next video.